I'm, I'm pretty much just preparing uh, every day like I'd prepare for a start. So uh, I feel like if I'm mechanically in a good spot and, you know, mentally prepared and kind of know how what pitches I need to execute and where, then it doesn't really matter when I pitch. Can you go into the the impact that Joe Musgrove has had on you and kind of just welcoming you here and what he's what he's meant maybe not in, in, not in terms of what he has done on the mound but just yeah. what he does for you guys in the club? Oh yeah, he's been huge. I mean, uh, I, he's the definition of a leader. You know, as soon as I got here, um, he showed me around. He's you know helped, I guess, assimilate me into the ball club and how things are done and uh, even just beyond that, uh, just he's been a great friend. Different pitchers throughout the year praise Ruben Niebla and the impact he's had on them. In your first year here, has he done anything different from other pitching coaches you've had in the past? And if so, how's that helped? Yeah, I mean, um, for me, I think the biggest thing is he's he's really showed me a, a couple different uh, pitches and pitch grips. So he's uh, you know kind of tinkered on my rep- repertoire a little bit. Um, and other than that, I think he's just uh, you know. He, he's good on the psychological aspect of, of the game, and then he's also good on the mechanical. So uh, that's a big part of pitching. And uh, I think as our, our relationship and, and uh, as he's gotten to know me more, as that's been built, he's kind of uh, you know been able to figure out different ways to help me as the season's gone on. Thank you. Yeah. A couple lighter ones. Were there any pitchers when you were growing up who you really loved watching and kind of tried to model your game after as a kid? Yeah, I always liked the uh, the power guys. You know, I liked uh, Randy Johnson, Pedro, John Smoltz, but I always wanted to be a power hitting shortstop, so I was uh, more focused on that. And uh, I know it's going back a while now, but do you remember kind of the first thing you did with the team when you got to Korea after flying over on yourself? Kind of, was it at the hotel? Was it at yeah. the bus? Uh, it was the hotel, uh, just a team breakfast. Um, and then other than that, I think it was... It was mainly just being at the field. Go to Tony here on the left side, second row. Dylan, let's go back to, you know, when you first arrived in Korea. I remember sitting on the bus uh, with a bunch of you guys, and there was a sense of, of relief, it seemed like, flowing off of you. Um, going from the organization in which you came to, to this one, just talk about that transition and, and, and how it's affected you this year. Yeah, well, uh, that was... Uh, Last off season, there were, there were trade rumors every day. So, uh, I guess just being placed somewhere and and having those be behind me was nice. And then, uh, yeah, coming coming to an organization that uh, has such a high commitment to winning and and trying to, you know, trying to get to the World Series and win the World Series. Uh, it was it was very refreshing, um, and uh, just happy to be here. Second row on the right side. Well, now I want to know what happened to the power hitting shortstop part. They didn't give me a chance. I mean, I'm a career 375, but they didn't give me a chance to let the power blossom. <laughs> Darn that DH. Yeah, for real. Uh, this is, if you don't start tomorrow, it'd be likely on Saturday. That's a pretty long break. Yeah. Uh, you you kind of had something similar in August with the one inning outing in, in Pittsburgh. Did you learn anything from that uh, experience to maybe can help you here with, with the long break potentially between starts? Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking at it as a negative. Um, if anything, it's just giving my body more time to rest and, and recover. And in the meantime, I'm working on my, my mechanics and, uh, you know, doing other things like that to stay locked in. So uh, either way, I'm going to be ready to go. Dennis, left side, second row. Hey, Dylan, I know you were throwing a camp of Sano for, for a lot of the season, but as you've gotten to work with Higashi Okamura, uh, what about his temperament makes him effective as a catcher, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, Higgy, Higgy's a great catcher. I mean, he's uh, he's very stoic. I actually haven't gotten to work with him a whole lot this year, but, uh, you know, I think he's, like I said, stoic. Uh, you know what you're going to get from him. And then on the offensive side, too, he's he's the best 9 hole hitter in the game, I think. Have you ever seen him outwardly excited? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was just talking to him a little bit earlier that uh, we need to see it on his next home run, but uh, off off uh, off the field for sure, yeah. Any examples you can share? Uh, gosh. I mean, uh, specific ones. I'll just say, you know, on the on the bus or different different things, different times when we're all kind of just uh, letting loose and messing around, you know. The second round on the right side, towards the middle. You've had quite a season between the trade, the Korea trip, yeah. wearing your no hitter shirt, celebrating uh, the playoff berth. What's been the most memorable moment of the season for you? Memorable. Uh, and that'll probably be 
easier for me to answer uh, when the season's over. But um, you know, obviously, the no hitter is is very special. Um, yeah, I, I would probably put that as number one. But you know, the uh, team wise, the triple play to clinch the playoffs, I think, is just about the craziest thing I've ever seen. So that that might actually be my favorite. Back to this side, Jeff in the front row. Uh, what was your takeaway from your last playoff start, and how eager are you to kind of maybe put that one behind you and write a new chapter? Yeah, uh, last playoff start, I remember just getting a big adrenaline dump and kind of like not feeling very in control of my body. So uh, it definitely wasn't the best, but um, you know, definitely learned from it, uh, and I think it'll it'll probably make me better in the long run for sure. Uh, Marty up on the riser in the back. Hey, Dylan, how much were you able to go ahead and soak in and appreciate just the vibe from yesterday, from starting intros to the end of the game? And what, in the time that you've been here, what has stood out to you about the relationship that the city seems to have with the Padres? Yeah, I mean, the atmosphere yesterday was amazing. Um, we were all expecting expecting to be that way just because, you know, it feels like every game it's that way. But there was definitely a next level of intensity and, and uh, energy there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away by how much of a baseball city San Diego is. I, I had no idea before I came here, um, but it really feels like, I mean, everybody's behind us. So it's a great feeling. We, we want nothing more than to li deliver winning to, this, uh, to the city and the fan base. So uh, we've, we've all really enjoyed it.